The following is a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of 640 Toronto. And good Sunday morning to everyone out there. Thank you so much for making us part of your weekend. I'm Chris Creston, joined as always by Kelvin, the money guy. And uh, today we're going to be chatting about a whole bunch of things to do with your money. It's not just investments. There's all sorts of other things that Calvin can help you with. And you can always get started by visiting his website. That's askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. You can click on the schedule a call link in the top right hand corner. And boom, you pick a time and a date of your choosing and you've got a call with Kelvin scheduled and you don't have to play telephone tag or you don't have to think oh, you know I'll, I'll, I, I don't want to call him and have to leave a message when no you send you select the time and date of your choosing and you have that appointment with Kelvin the money guy that's ask kelvin.ca that's ask k e l v i n dot c a and I'll throw out his phone number a little later on in the show if you want to give him a call directly and just ring him and say hey I'm uh, I've got a question about my money I got a question about uh, buying a home. I got a question about uh, life insurance. All those things are things we're going to be touching on here today. How's everything going this Sunday morning? Hey, good morning. Everything actually, everything's good. Yeah, you know, we we've had sort of a lot going on um, in people's money life lately. Of course, there's the the uncertainty surrounding the pandemic that we're just sort of used to now. There's the mm-hmm. uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, which is frustrating and infuriating for so many of us and then there's just sort of extra things thrown in the balance and this week the federal government decided they're going to announce their budget and they're going to have a a bunch of goodies in there they're supposed to help people especially people who are trying to afford a home and in for us for some people it's infuriating too because they look at it and think does this actually help me what what's in there what what, is there anything like before we dig too deep into everything else i think that that's sort of the headline uh, on a lot of people's minds and one of the things was um this new home buyers plan this new home buyers Mm -hmm. savings account yeah so it's really bizarre what they did because you know the old home buyers plan that we all know you can take $35,000 $35,000 out of your RSP and use it towards a home and you don't pay the tax on the RSP, right? So, so pretty much you're just loaning yourself, you're just loaning yourself your own money. You're just giving yourself a loan to buy a house. Well, the right, new one is, I did and so many people in the audience probably did as well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and after I'll tell you why you shouldn't pay this back anyhow. So the new one is now you can put, I don't know, another home buyer's plan, I guess. And, put in the 30,000 and take it out. The problem is you don't have, you can only use one or the other. You can't use both. So it's really like a moot point. <laughs> and, and what they didn't figure is the typical person that's buying a house, couple, married couple or single, whatever, right? Or 30 to 35, maybe. Where are you going to get $60,000 to put in both those plans? And if you get 60,000 from your parents or you win or you invested your money properly, well, you can only use the 35000 so what's the point? So it's a bogus, it's very bogus. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You know what, it, and it's funny because that's the way that I looked at it, and I'm the radio guy, you're the money guy, so I, my reaction was this doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me, and you know, no. to, to hear you say it, it's sort of, well, okay, that it, it makes even less sense now to think of it as it's sort of a shell game. We've just sort of moved it from one place to another. Yeah, that's all. We put it from the left pocket to the right pocket, and you can't use both pockets to buy to buy the beer. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you know, you bring up a, a good point that most of the young couples, young people, and it's generally couples now that can afford to buy a home. A lot, of, very few mm-hmm. people can afford to buy it on their own. Um, yeah. so, they don't have that cash anyway. No. So it's kind of one of those, uh, you know, bizarre thing. And, and think about the old home buyer's plan. I don't know, Chris, if you used your RSPs and mm-hmm. to buy yeah. to buy your home. And, yeah, I did. and the thing is, did you? Yeah. So now two years, is it two years since you moved in there? I don't remember. 
Oh, I'm talking way back in my, my when I first bought my first property. Oh, right, your first house. That's right. So that was. That's right. Uh, yes. That's right. Yeah, no, it's. Uh, it's I forgot about while, that. Yeah. But I, I've gone and uh, I've been you know, diligently paying it off, paying it back. And uh, what, how many so, years do we have to do it? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen years. So think I'm about this, all, for example. Almost paid back. Okay, so think about what you just did. You took twenty thousand out of your RSP. 15 years ago, whatever, to buy your house. And then they told you to take the next 15, where well, you paid no tax. Then they said, um, now you got 15 years to put it back, right? One fifteen every year for 15 years. So now you've put back that $20,000 in your RSP. And when you take it out, guess what? You're gonna pay the tax on it. So what did you just do? You created a big tax problem for yourself. So the money that you end up paying back, let's say it was 1200 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. um, that you have to pay back every year. If you didn't pay back the 1200, they add it to your income and they tax you on it. So before you pay back the home buyers, what you need to do is say, is that $1,200 going to put me in the next tax bracket? And if it, and if it does, if it doesn't, then don't pay it back. Take the money and pay down something that's, uh, you know, like a credit card debt. If it's going to put you in the next tax bracket, well, why don't you go and borrow twenty thousand dollars that you took for your house? Take the twelve hundred dollars and pay the interest on the borrowed money that's outside an RSP or a tax for saving, and now you get a tax break. So if you're in a forty percent tax bracket, you're getting back about four hundred bucks. The 20,000 is compounding for you. Money doubles every eight to 10 years if you do it properly. So what you would have done now, 15 years later, is that 20,000 would have been 40, might have been 60,000, rather than just having 20,000 back in your RSP. So you did the wrong, so people do the Here wrong thing. Here I am, I'm the, the guy know. that we've talked about before, the shoulda, woulda, coulda guy. And yes. I, yeah. I, I've wasted my money instead of making mm -hmm. more. Yeah, because a home bias is just a loan. You're just loaning yourself your own money. So if you don't pay it back, who cares? The caveat is the amount you're supposed to pay back will be taxable if you don't use some common sense about it. So people that have their home buyers that bought their house two years ago and have to start paying it back this year, please sit down with your advisor and figure out why you shouldn't or give me a call and I'll tell you why you shouldn't. It's the same money that you're going to have to pay throughout the year anyways. So why not look for something sensible to do with it rather than give it back? You know, and I think that that's so interesting and is why so many of us you know, need a financial advisor. We need someone like you in our corner, Kelvin. Um, and to everyone out there listening, you know, give Kelvin a call. If you don't have a financial advisor, ask your advisor if they think that that, that would work for you and uh, maybe your kids or or whoever it is in your life that you're thinking about. But you know, if you don't have an advisor, you want a second opinion, give Kelvin a call. I told you I'd give out his uh, direct number at some point in the show. Here it is, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. Easy to remember, 416-457-PLAN, because you need one. And if you don't have a plan, you don't have someone in your corner like Kelvin, you'll make... The, the mistakes that you make when you're just doing the ordinary thing, when you're doing things as they seem to be prescribed, as sort of your neighbors are doing them, as your parents and friends have done them, but there are mm -hmm. different ways to do things, and they're not they're they're not crazy, they're not out there, they're just little <laughs> tweaks in the way that you can do things, and you find yourself ahead rather than constantly behind or constantly just, you know, keeping your head above water, which is what I hear the most from people, especially young people trying to get into the real estate market, right? They find themselves sort of caught behind and wishing that they had uh, an advantage or wishing that they had a leg up on all the, all the other opportunities, all the other things that they have uh, put before them. And, you know, and I think this is probably a decent time to take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk to Kelvin about a whole lot more. One of the things that we're going to be chatting about is uh, life insurance, critical injury uh, insurance as well, critical illness insurance. That's all coming up here as we continue. Remember, the website is askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N.ca. And you can call him anytime at 416 457 7526. That's 416 
457 plan. Stay tuned. Whole lot more of your life, your money coming up here with Kelvin, the money guy on 640 Toronto. You're listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of 640 Toronto. If you've got some issues with your money, your money life, <laughs> you should probably be given a financial advisor a call. And that's why it's uh, important to have one in the corner. If you've got one, Give them a call about any of the things we're talking about. If you don't, call Kelvin. And if you got a second opinion or you need a second opinion, call Kelvin as well. And you can always give him a call directly. I'll throw out the number at the end of the segment where you can call Kelvin directly. And you know, when I do, his cell phone blows up. People are always calling Kelvin uh, about these things. So if you also want to just book a call and book an appointment, you can always visit his website askkelvin.ca that's ask k-e-l-v-i-n.ca it can you can book a call you don't have to show up to his office you can just have a quick call and have a chat with him that's ask k-e-l-v-i-n.ca and you know i was just saying kelvin it's so important to have a financial advisor in your corner and oh one of the reasons is the investments and the stocks and the bonds and the RSPs and the TFSAs and the home buyers plans and stuff. But there's so much more. It's not just you know, what you're doing at RSP time. There's so much more that can be done with a good financial advisor. And that'll get you that advantage that I was talking about before the end of the break, before the last break, where we do the sort of normal things all the time and we just sort of do what our parents did or we do what our brother did or we do what our sister did or we do what our neighbors do and we mm -hmm. think ah, why am i not getting anything better than what i had why am i not getting ahead why do i always feel like i'm just keeping my head above water there are things that you can do and it's all over the place and one of the things kelvin that that you talk about quite often is the insurance and the, the mm -hmm. advantages you can have if you have the right insurance plans and that's something that you don't necessarily think about and you're not going to get that information at a bank well think think about it you know we in the financial planning business have been doing this for 25 30 40 50 years we just talk about life and we talk about uh, the stock markets going up and down up and down right you know, I earned this, I didn't earn this, the markets are going to crash and all these things are going to happen. But what, what's our greatest asset, you think, Chris? Mm. So our greatest asset is to get up in the morning, the ability to go and earn a living. That's our greatest right. asset, That's right? Potential. Yeah. yeah. So what if something was to happen to us in now or in the future, meaning death or illness? Can, stroke, cancer, heart attack, right? You know, in our generation, um, what do they say? Uh, two in five will be diagnosed with cancer and one in four will die, right? So this next set, the after the 9.30, we'll talk about critical illness, but I wanted to talk a little bit about life insurance. What purpose does this serve when we're living and what purpose does it serve when we die? So life insurance and critical illness should be part of your financial plan. And many of us don't include that. We don't think about it because we associate life insurance with what? Death. With death, <laughs> right? Darkness, it's, it's funny. sorrow, despair. Yeah. If, and, and it's really funny because if I, and a will, we wouldn't do a will because we think, oh my God, I'm gonna die. The sooner, the minute I do that will, I'm gonna die. Or the minute I buy that life insurance, I'm gonna die. It's funny how our human mind works, but we have to get around that. We have to get our emotions away. Our feelings, remember I talk about our feelings? Get your feelings out of this. What I found is that most people um, buy life insurance from a friend or a family member. And many times it's not what they should buy. In, in fact, never deal with a friend with money, never deal with a friend or family member. That's a great way to ruin your Christmas, your Easter, <laughs> everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so don't buy anything from friends or family, I, I would, in my opinion anyways, right? Could be wrong, could be right. So unfortunately, that's how people get their life insurance. So most people, they buy, they don't buy a life insurance. It's sold to them. It's thrown, given down their throat by selling them the thing, the insurance. 
So that's something, you know, it, like I say, it should be part of your financial plan. But if it doesn't, if you don't do it according to your lifestyle, and you're doing it because you want to please someone like your friends or family, you know, don't do it. Sit down with a proper financial advisor. I'm not when I say proper, I don't mean, you know, sit down with, your, with an advisor that's unbiased, that looks outside the box and really think about what you should do. So, you know, insurance, life insurance and critical illness, actually, um, you know, to give you a, a sense of security for the people that you love, right? Um, the proceeds from life insurance, first of all, is not taxable. So there's a huge advantage. Um, and, the, and the money could be paid, you know, to pay off a mortgage, could be paid off to pay off child expenses like education, you know, pay off some debt that you may have, and mortgage, you know, pay off your mortgage. In fact, there's a real problem when people buy, um, when they get their mortgage. They go to the bank or whoever, and then the mortgage person or the bank people says, well, you want mortgage insurance? And they go, yeah, and they take off the box. Well, it's the wrong thing to do. More, there's nothing There's nothing called mortgage insurance. It's just a term coined by the bank. Really, it's a life insurance. So there's very many things people that are listening should go and grab their mortgage statement and look and see, did they tick off the box for life insurance? And if they did, have a look at what they're paying. And many times, it's the wrong thing to do because when you buy a mortgage, when you have a mortgage, if you're not going to pay off the mortgage in five years, which very many people do, um, when the five year comes to renew the mortgage, well, you're five years older. So guess what's going to happen to your premium? It's going to go up. It go up. So, yeah. And in 10 years, guess what happens? It's going to double because you're 10 years older. And what if you got some can't, what if you got some type of medical issue, you won't get it. Interesting. So, so then it's yeah. really just there to, I guess, at, at that point, you know, it, the bank's only going to make more and more money or the lender's only going to make more and more mm. money on that mm. mortgage insurance because, like you said, who's paying off their mortgage in five years? By the end of right. your mortgage, you're going to find yourself paying a lot of money for this insurance. And, and here's another reason. So let's say your mortgage is $500,000. You buy a mortgage insurance of $500,000 with the bank, right? And you die. Well, guess who gets the money? The bank. What if you had a 2% mortgage and you died? I don't like to talk about dying, but let's say you died. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like the spouse to get the $500,000 invested and make 5% rather than give it to the bank and pay down a 1% mortgage. So people really need to go and take, go after the show and dig out your mortgage statement and have a look. And another problem is the underwriting is done after the debt. So for example, you get a a mortgage insurance and there's no underwriting, but then you die. That's when it's done. And they found out you got cancer or something and they go, well, we can't, or you smoke and you say you're a non-smoker. Well, guess what? the claim is denied. So really be mindful of that. So that's the one thing I can say about the life insurance is make sure you go and have a look at it. We never review that. We It's funny how we are. Eh? We'll, we'll look at our investment statements every quarter and we mad at advisor if we're happy, I don't know, good or bad. But we'll never look at our, um, we'll never look at our life insurance policy for some reason. So you should go and grab it after the show and have a look and see, do I have a term insurance? Do I have a long, like, what do I got? And many people are. So many people just probably buy it in a hurry. Maybe they just had their first kid and they think, well, I just got to make sure that they're covered and you don't, you don't review it afterwards and you don't review your mortgage either. And you've, you know, take that box and all of a sudden, you know, like you shouldn't, I guess the, the advice would be not to, you know, not get, not get the mortgage insurance. It's not get the mortgage insurance, but get a proper life insurance plan. Well, instead. and that's the thing. It, when you go shopping, right? When you go shopping, if something is twenty bucks, um, or you can get it for you know fifteen dollars, you're going to buy the fifteen dollars one, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing as life insurance. Many people buy a term insurance, like a term ten or a term twenty insurance. 
But sometimes it's the wrong thing to buy. You wasted all your money because if you don't die, you get no money out of it. So it's it's very interesting how how we think about things. You know, we actually we don't. How it's funny how we don't think about things. Mm-hmm. So insurance is very. It's when you're living, um, when you when you die, it pays off everything for you. It also covers estate tax. Many people uh, have two homes, right? Their real house that they live in or their cottage or right. they bought a condo or rental because of the housing market, right? Well, what do you think happens when you die? You've got to pay tax on it. You've got to pay capital gains tax. Right, and it's so, not you, it's your spouse or it's your kids or... Mm-hmm. And how many And how many people today that are in their 80s and their kids are in their, I guess, 40s or 50s. And the last parent died, and now the people have to pay the tax on the money. So we don't have the money. So what do we got to do? We got to sell the property to pay the tax. So it's a big, big problem. So if we know in the future, in 20 years from now, that we're going to have tax or leave tax problems for our kids, well, why wouldn't we go and buy a joint last to die insurance policy now? That'll cover the taxes when the last spouse dies. Interesting. So, ins- so insurance is not just for when you die today. It's more important when you die down the road because of all the taxes that have to be paid. So well, you really got to be about, mindful. You know, when you think about uh, wealth, or you think about how wealthy families you know, pass on their their wealth to the next generation, one of the big ways is through property. And if you do have you're lucky enough to have made enough money to have a secondary property and you want to pass it on to your kids. Well, if the tax mm-hmm. burden is too much to keep it, then it, you didn't do much to, to pass it on for generations and generations, right? It stops with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why not look at those things now and, and see what the problem, look at a 80 year old person today, 85, whatever, and see what issues they have. When it comes to the tax man, they invested well, they saved well, they you know they they lived great, but now all that money that they made, they have to give it back. What's the point? But what if you found a way to transfer the the money to the next generation? And how wealthy people do it is through a life insurance, a joint last to die life insurance policy. There's many types of insurance policies, and and you know whether life insurance is a smart investment may depend on what you need and what you want the policy to do for you. Okay. So it's gone beyond I die, I get some money. It's more of a tax planning strategy than anything else. Um, So it's all changed. You know, the whole world's changed as far as investments and things like that. And after the break, we'll talk about what type of insurance should you buy and how much coverage should you buy. Right. Great. That's coming up after the break here on Your Life, Your Money. It's all interesting stuff and stuff that you don't often think about. You don't find your mind wandering into uh, because, you know, like we said, we don't like talking about death. We don't like thinking about it. But there's so much where life insurance can actually affect you while you're living. It can affect your family and can affect things for the better. And you don't have to worry about it being a dark thing. If you've got a question, you can always call Kelvin uh, privately and Chat with him at 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. Get chatting about your plan. Get chatting about your life insurance. Take a look at what your life insurance actually offers you. See what the term is on it. See if you've got this joint last to die policy and see if that's something that you could get into. 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. Whole lot more of your life Your money continuing here on 640 Toronto. You're listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of 640 Toronto. And thank you for making us part of your Sunday morning. Don't forget to visit Kelvin's website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask, K-E-L-V-I-N dot C-A. Who's Kelvin? He is the money guy. He is one of the top financial advisors in the country and an all-around great guy. And if you made us part of your Sunday, then you've uh, listened. Hopefully you've listened before. If you haven't, then welcome. And uh, we're hoping uh, that there's 
something that you can take away from this show and you can learn from, or maybe it's a question that you can bring to your advisor, or you can give Kelvin a call and ask him about it. AskKelvin.ca is a great place to start. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. Or if you prefer to call him directly, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And Kelvin, you know, we've been talking about life insurance uh, in the last segment and talking about really how it's become, you know, it's it's not just necessarily about, all right, well, this I'm going to buy this insurance and then I'll pay my bills when I've passed away. There's a whole tax planning side to it as well. Right. Well, you know, life insurance um, gives you a, a peace of mind knowing that money will be available to protect your family and, and the estate in a number of ways, right? So your life insurance follows you when you retire and you're no longer to be insured by your employer, right? Because we all have life insurance when we work, but when you leave, it's done. So that's one thing you should look at. How much coverage do I need? How much coverage depends on you? The rule of thumb is get three times your income, but maybe it's changed now because inflation and all that stuff has happened, right? So revisit your insurance policy, go pull it out. What can I buy? What type? There's all kinds of insurance out there. There's whole life, there's term, there's, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. What's right for you is what's right for you. So you need to sit down and see where you are. Term insurance, in my opinion, many people buy a term 10. Well, a term 10 in 10 years, if you don't die, you get no money. It's like renting, either rent or buy, right? Many people I see that come from the radio shows or clients that give me their insurance policy to review, it expires when they're 60, 65 because they bought it 20 years ago from the whoever they bought it from. And at the time seemed like a great idea because 20 years from now seems like a long time. But guess what? It's not a long time. So instead of paying $100 premium, now it's going to be $300. So like, that's where the problem is. your choice now is you're 60, yeah. 65, and your choice is either live yeah. without life insurance or you know, re-up yeah. at the new rate based on your new age, based on your current health conditions, and your premiums are going to be higher. And that's when you really need the insurance is when you're in your 60s because – you're going to be liable to pay mortgage or you want to leave money to your, you know, your, your heirs or whatever. So that's what the, that's what the problem is. So be very mindful of what type you buy. I get it. Okay. And you know, I, I, the term is very attractive because it's going to be cheaper. It's going to look like it's cheaper and everything. And you're going to look at it and yeah. you're going to say, all right, well, in 20 years is that, that that's, that's a long time, but you're kind of betting against yeah. yourself with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a That's bad right. bet because yeah. the life expectancy is is more than than that, depending on when you're buying it. Exactly. But if you're buying it yeah. in, when you're 40 and then you know, you're know you only betting on yourself to live to 60, well, most people <laughs> live into their 70s and 80s or more. And you're <laughs> so it's a bad bet to make. It's, a, yeah, it's like retiring. Long time ago when they set the retirement age, it was 65 because – my God, we're dead when we're like 70. Mm. Insurance is the same thing because we're living till 85 to 90. So if, yeah. you're, if your term 20 or term 30 expires when you're 80, well, now what do you do? Well, you can't buy insurance because it's too, you're too old, first yeah. of all, and you might have health issues. So there's two types of policies, the whole life and the term. The whole life is like buying a Cadillac. And the term is like buying, well, I don't want to mention any other brands, but it's like, it's like renting, and, renting car. and buying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you like to do? What it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so both type of policies have their benefits and drawbacks. So it all depends. It all depends on your needs. What do you need and your financial objectives? That's why I say it should be part of your financial plan. So it could be, if you die early, or it could be when you die uh, the appropriate age, 90, whatever, to protect the estate. So everything depends on you. Don't just go out on a whim and buy it from a friend or family member because you're, you're the one who's going to, to regret doing it. You know, some people mistakenly believe that life insurance is a scam. And how do we think that? Well, we think of TV shows like... Um, Groundhog Day. Remember when he was trying to sell him the life insurance? Yeah, that's oh, right. 
<laughs> we take up Herb Tarlick from the WKRP. So we think it's a big scam, but it but it's not. It's it all depends on you and it depends on how it fits into your into your world. So you really need to sit and think about it. You know, we don't know when we're gonna die. Nobody knows when. It could be today, tomorrow, fifty years in the future, but it's gonna happen. So life insurance will protect your ears and it'll give them some peace of mind through any difficult time. Remember, our greatest asset is to get up in the morning and go to work to earn an income, right? What if you can't? So we're not, in my opinion, Chris, you know, I see, I don't think we're going to die like before we're, I don't know, get older, like 70s, 80s. But the one thing that could happen to us is get critically ill. Our generation is stroke cancer, heart attack. So I think it's more important for people to buy a critical illness insurance than anything else. These critical illness insurance, you buy what they call a 20 year pay. So 20 years from now, if you didn't get one of the 27 things, but the big things are the stroke, cancer, heart attack, you get all your money back. So you always buy one time your income, okay? And if you can't fund it, if you don't have the money to fund it, why don't you borrow the money from your RSP? So for example, a 40 year old guy, person, buys $100,000 of critical illness, it costs you about three grand, let's say, for example. Well, why don't you take the $3,000 out of your RSP and pay for it? Pay the withholding tax, which is minimal, 10%, so 300 bucks. Put the money in the critical illness, guarantees that if something happens to you within the next 20 years, illness, not dying, illness, you get a hundred grand to pay and do whatever you want with it, right? In 20 years, nothing happens to you. Well, well you take the money and put it back in your RSP. So 20 years, 3,000 uh, 3, bucks is 66,000 or 60,000. You put that money back in your RSP. If your income is about 70,000 or 60, 70, 80,000, you're going to save yourself $17,000 in taxes. So what did it really cost you over the 20 years? Nothing. Just like you borrowed your money from your RSP to buy your house. Well, why don't you borrow the money from your RSP to buy a peace of mind that if you get stroke, cancer, heart attack, nothing happens. So you really need to sit, people need to sit and think about that. Maybe after the break, uh, I'll talk about some of the benefits and some of the things that you get out of the critical illness. The biggest problem with the critical illness I find is how do we fund it? How do I pay for it? So if you do it the way I'm telling you to do it, you win both ways. You and your family win both ways. Take some of the money, like I say, from the RSP and fund it and you get all the money back. So what did it, it's a no brainer to be honest with you. And that's the thing. I think that the biggest leap is that how do I fund it? How do I get this done? And that's why it's great to have someone like Kelvin, the money guy in your corner, because he's been there. He's done this for people and it's worked. And if you've, if you're able to do that, you get that peace of mind. God forbid you actually have to use it. You use it. And you, you, you know what? The, the thing that doesn't kill you also doesn't make you broke. And then you're, right. you're in a better position when you get better. And that's where you want to be. And then if you don't use it, then you're actually up. So that is a pretty good situation <laughs> to be in. We'll talk more about that as the show continues here on 640 Toronto. It's your life, your money with Kelvin, the money guy. Don't forget to visit his website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. Or you can call him 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. Talking more about that critical illness insurance on the other side here, continuing on 640 Toronto. You're listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of 640 Toronto. And thank you so much for making us part of your weekend. We really appreciate it. And give us a ring, like the big voice people said, and give Kelvin a call um, on his private line. And we'll uh, give you that number by the end of the show as well. Um, but I want to also let you know that you can book a call with him on his website by visiting askkelvin.ca. That's ask 
K-E-L-V-I-N dot C-A. Click on the schedule call link and you will be connected with Kelvin at a time and date of your choosing. But if you prefer to just give him a ring, I'll give you that number at the end of the show where you can call Kelvin and uh, and get chatting with him about a quick question. He just needs thinking, ah, you know what, that thing they were talking about, about the home buyer's plan, I got a question. I just want to ask Kelvin about it. Give him a call. I'll throw out the number at the end of the show here coming up at the top of the hour. Um, but right now we're talking about uh, life insurance, critical illness insurance, and, you know, Kelvin, you're a financial advisor. Why are we talking to a financial advisor about insurance plans? Well, you know, I think life and critical illness insurance, you know, must be a part of your financial plan. It shouldn't be something that you just buy or sold to. Um, it is just as important, if not more important, than the stock markets going up and down. You know, no one can predict how long we will live or what illnesses might affect our dreams. Therefore, you know, give yourself and your family, I would say, a peace of mind um, by sitting down with your advisor and revisiting your policy. Go and pull it out and have a look at it. Remember, you know, your greatest asset is the ability to get up in the morning and go and earn a living. Now, if you can't do that, what happens? Well, we don't know. So the two things to protect that is life insurance and critical illness. So you really got to look at those things as part of your financial plan, not just buying a product again. So critical illness is really kind of cool thing. You don't, you don't use it, you get your money back. Right? Imagine you bought car insurance and you never got into an accident. And 20 years later, the insurance company says, hey, you've been good, man. Here's your money back. I would love that. What a deal. What would you sign up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Critical illness is very hard to get in the sense that you have to be really healthy, perfectly healthy. So when you get it, when you're young, think of kids, right? If you have kids that are under 20, every parent that's listening that have kids under 20, go and get your buy, get your kids a critical illness slash life insurance for $100,000 that costs maybe 12, maybe 100 bucks a month. It's the best wedding gift you'll ever give your kids. I'm telling you, because this never existed before. When we were younger, we had a life insurance, but we never had critical illness. So the best gift you can give your kids, your best wedding present, is go get them a critical illness paid off in 20 years. If they're 20, by the time they're 40, nothing to pay for. And it carries them and follows them for the rest of their lives, no matter what may happen. So that's one thing you should do. One less worry. And one of the things that you talked about before the break is how to fund that. And you can use your RSPs, pay that withholding yes. tax, and yes. for, you know, work, work your finances yeah. that way. One of the big things that happen with critical illness is you get what they call best doctors. So, for example, let's say you got an illness that, well, it's, it's new, not new, but it's a rare thing. Then what they do is they search the world for the best doctor to look after that. And that's what you get with, the, with this. The best time to buy critical illness or life insurance is guess when? Now, because you're healthy and you don't need it. Always, always look ahead. Always look ahead. That's why the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror, right? <laughs> look ahead. Look at. Always think ahead of what you're going to do. Is there a cost to it? Of course, there are costs to everything. But let's figure out how to how to pay for it. Let's figure out. Do you need it? I think personally, anybody under 40 that's listening have to go and get themselves a critical illness insurance because it might go away soon. It's starting to go away in the U.S. because of the COVID. The insurance companies, you know, one day in time is going to say, man, we can't afford this anymore. Um, and the, and, the, and the, if you buy $100,000 critical illness, you get a hundred grand when you're diagnosed what whatever you may diagnose with. That hundred thousand is not taxable and can go towards paying for, you know, treatment, things like that. So well, treatment, really, sit, maybe home yeah. care, things that aren't sure. really covered, right? Maybe you need to get mm -hmm. some sort of special equipment, or you need to renovate your house or something to make sure that you can you know, live and recover properly. Yeah, and that's one, that's one of the things, you know, um, they're saying 90% of people that are diagnosed with cancer are age 50 and over. 
So why wouldn't you buy that if you're in your 30s and your 40s knowing that that's what's happening? Well, why wouldn't you go get it now? And why wouldn't you fund it from your RSP if I was you? I was looking at other stats, you know, Chris, and it says 229,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with some type of cancer. And really shockingly, I didn't realize this, was 84,600 will actually die. Uh, but, you know, before, I remember growing up, we never really knew anybody that had cancer. Eh? I didn't know any. My mom passed away from cancer, and she never smoked and did those things that we, that we knew caused cancer. Mm -hmm. But it happened. So, you know, we, everybody knows someone that has it. So why not go? You might not get it. And if you don't get it, well, you get your money back. What well, if you do get it, you, under, you get 100 grand. So <laughs> what do you have to lose? Nothing. Right, exactly. And it's just a matter of that hurdle of how do you fund it and you've got a plan for how to do it. And if you haven't, uh, weren't listening earlier and you want to you know, uh, find out more about that, you can always listen to la past shows at askkelvin.ca or you can give them a call if you want to see, see if that would work for you. If you've got the ability to, to fund that uh, critical illness insurance through your RSP or through some other uh, funding or through some other uh, source of money, you can you know, see what tricks Kelvin has up his sleeves. He's been there for decades. He's been doing this for clients and it's worked. And, you know, you said about, mm -hmm. you know, getting it for your kids. I, I know you did, you did it for your daughter, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We had Brittany on the yeah. show talking about, uh, about exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, I'm telling you, man, it's the best thing that people could do for their kids. It's the best wedding gift you can give them because it'll last them forever. <laughs> Even if they split up, <laughs> they, can <take> it with, <laughs> they can take it with them. <laughs> so really consider that. Sit down with your advisor and dig into it. Don't think you're buying something. My gosh, you're, you're, what you're doing is you're giving yourself a peace of mind and your family a peace of mind for the future. And there's nothing better you can do for your family than that, I think, anyhow. Absolutely terrific. And thank you so much, Kelvin, for you know, providing us with this insight and helping us figure out some of these details because it is a conversation a lot of us don't want to have. But there's yeah. so much that can be learned from it and so many different ways that we can find to, to fund things, to make sure that we've got the money and money for our kids. I don't Bring know. it up. You're getting together. Uh, while the kids are digging around for some Easter eggs or whatever they're doing, you can go and uh, and have a, a quick chat about about insurance and you know, maybe take a look at your policy after the show. See what see what it says in there. See what kind of term you've got. Don't look at the time. We do have to go. And uh, I thank you, Kelvin, for making another great show and very informative. I promised everyone I would give out Kelvin's cell phone number at the end of the show. It's four one six four five seven seven five two six. That's 416-457-PLAN. Give him a call. And don't forget, you can always visit his website, askkelvin.ca. Thank you again for making us part of your Sunday, and stay tuned to 640 Toronto. The preceding was a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of 640 Toronto.